I'm Insomniac and this is the Vostok Anchor K162 Submarine. You feel the vibe, vibe. The first thing you notice about the case is the insane dimensions. It's huge, it's tall, and it definitely makes a statement. It's stainless steel finished in a matte black PVD coating that does look and feel to be of good quality. One thing that I really like here is that the case back is done in a matching matte black, but with gloss black highlights for the series name and the submarine logo. You have engraved information about the watch below that, and towards the bottom you have the number of your watch. Apparently only 3,000 of these were made. The bezel on this piece is a mix of positive and negative. The positives are, one, the aesthetic of the bezel. You have a cool metallic gold that almost matches the yellow dial perfectly, with black numerals for most of it, then a contrasting black section with gold numerals, all of which looks good with the dial. Two, the grip of the bezel is great, and because the spacing between the grooves is so wide, it's a bezel that you could easily use with gloves on. The main negative is the mechanism. When turning the bezel, you have a super smooth feel, but one, it's not very firmly locked in place in any one position, so it could be accidentally turned. And two, there's a large amount of play in the mechanism between clicks. Last, you have the crown, which I actually think is a very smart design for this piece. First, aesthetically, they designed the center of it to mimic the pattern of the screws which hold the strap in place. Second, you have the deep grooves of the crown, which have a lot of grip, which is helpful for screwing down and unscrewing the crown. And last, probably my favorite part of the crown, is the position of the crown. You can see here that it's up above the 2 o'clock position. Now in terms of balance, I don't usually like offset crowns, but in the case of a watch like this with a giant diameter, the crown being positioned way up there actually makes this piece a lot more comfortable on the wrist by cutting down on a few millimeters of overall width compared to if it were directly on the side of the case. Good thinking there. Overall, I do like this case, minus the huge dimensions. The dial's hard not to notice on this piece. It's school bus yellow and about as large as a school bus. There's a large angled chapter ring that goes around the outer edge which gives this dial kind of a giant pie pan shape. The applied rectangular hour indices, the triangular 12 o'clock index, and the exaggerated 9 and 3 indices all have a decent thickness to them and a fairly good polish. The only thing I don't love about the hour indices is the white inserts. As you'll see later, that isn't loom filling, so it's useless. Solid polished indices would have shown up just fine on this dial against the yellow background. Printed on the dial under the 12 o'clock index, you have the Vostok logo as well as the waterproof rating, and above the 6 o'clock index, you have the series name in a cool font and a well-placed date window with a black border. On the chapter ring, you have a printed minute track with numerals every 5 minutes and long, easy-to-find straight-line indices for the individual minutes, as well as a smaller fifth second track at the outer edge. The hands on this watch are excellent. Now on a personal note, I don't actually like the giant exaggerated triangle arrow shaped hour hand or the large anchor looking counterbalance on the second hand, but that's just a personal preference thing. And as I can admit that they look good with the overall aesthetic of this dial, I won't count that against the score for the dial. Besides my personal preference gripes, the hands are black, which gives excellent contrast against the yellow dial. And all three of them are the perfect length for this dial. Very well done. The only usable complication on this dial is the date at 6 o'clock. It's placed just right in terms of dial symmetry, it's a white numeral on a black disc which looks good with the dial overall, and it's large enough to read easily. So no issues here. The loom on this watch could have been excellent, and it almost is. Now looking at it on screen here you might be a bit confused because number one, most of it doesn't look very bright, and number two, the marker on the bezel and the loom inside the second hand look a lot brighter than the rest of the loom on this watch. That's because this watch uses gas-filled tritium tubes for the hour markers as well as for the minute and hour hands, while the second hand is filled with superluminova. Those tritium tubes might not look impressively bright, but keep in mind that for those of you who don't know how those work, they don't need to be charged. They just glow, basically forever. So regardless of whether or not you are exposed to light, and regardless of how long you're in the dark, 
These will always glow as opposed to the tip of the second hand, which looks a lot brighter, but that will fade and eventually stop glowing completely. So the Tritium is obviously better for a dive style watch. So my issue here is that I can't imagine why Vostok couldn't have used one more Tritium tube for the second hand. Not only do the bezel marker and second hand tips stick out like sore thumbs because of the different material used, but it's inconsistent because of the infinite amount of glow you'll get out of the tritium tubes versus the few minutes you'll get out of the second hand tip and the bezel marker. It would have been perfect if they would have just gone full tritium here. Time at a glance on this piece is excellent. You have black hands, black printing, and polished steel against a bright yellow background, and hands that are a perfect length with very pointy tips, so it's very easy to find the time quickly and easily with this watch. This watch actually comes with three straps. First you have the strap that's on the watch. It's a slightly textured black leather with yellow stitching which matches the watch perfectly. It's a good width for the size of this watch. It's a good quality thickness. Uh, which is stiff but surprisingly pliable right out of the box. The free loops work well and stay in place, and the buckle matches the case perfectly and has the Vostok logo engraved into it. The watch also comes with two thick rubber dive straps, one in black and one in yellow. All of these straps are of good durable quality and look good with the watch. The only reason I'm going to subtract points here is because changing these straps is way harder than it needs to be. They're held in with screws, which are easy to lose between strap changes if you're not careful, and although Vostok does include not one, but two specialized screwdrivers for removing the straps, they don't include a separate tool for pushing out the solid threaded strap bars once the screws are out. So you wind up needing to find something skinny enough to fit inside the screw holes, then you have to carefully hammer out the strap bars before inserting the next strap and reversing the whole process. It's more difficult and agitating than most strap changes with any other watch I've seen, so although it seems like a good idea for stability, it's an over-engineered nightmare in terms of practicality and efficiency. And last we come down to value. The retail price on this watch is $719, which is definitely steep, but it's still not outlandish when you look at the features. But as of the time of this review, the only couple I could find for sale were actually on eBay, and they were as low as about $419. And if you like the aesthetic of this piece and you have a large wrist to pull it off, I'd actually say it's a good value at that price. For that price, you're getting a well-made watch with a workhorse Seiko automatic movement, a crazy case, three straps, great water resistance, and those tritium tubes. Keep in mind that there really aren't many sub $500 watches that use tritium tubes for the loom. And the icing on the cake here is that it's a limited production watch, so if you collect Vostok watches, that's pretty cool. And even if you don't, there's a possibility that this watch might increase in value over time. So because of the bloated dimensions of this piece, it wouldn't be a choice for me personally. But if you're looking for these kinds of features and you like a large watch, I think it's a good value. Well, a big shout out to Jim for letting me borrow this watch. I really appreciate it. He's got a pretty cool collection, so uh, you've actually seen a couple of his other watches on this channel already, including the last Vostok that I reviewed here on the channel, the uh, limited edition One North Pole something or other. Uh, so anyway, again, big shout out to Jim. Thank you very much. If you have any watches you'd like to send in to be reviewed here at Should I Time This, I will review them, insure them, and send them back. Email me at shouldITimethis at gmail.com. Let me know what you have. I'll give you the address, let you know where to send it, and we can see what kind of score your watch gets. And if you'd like to see a lot more videos on this channel, if you appreciate the work that goes into these videos and you would like to throw some support my way, take a look at the link at the top of the video description. That is my Patreon page. Sign up over there. And I will see you all at the next one.